this is Sabina at Cross Keys Crafts. It's the 21st of December, it's winter solstice today, and I have got another die for myself today. If you haven't watched the beginning of this series, I made myself my own advent calendar um, with my uh, dies here that I have never used or only used once, and I set myself the challenge to use these at last. So for today, I have got these little dies. I only bought these recently from Printable Haven, I believe. These are X-Cut mini dies, and I have seen them advertised. I'm sure I have, like, at the range for a pound for these mini dies, but I can check the price again for you. And, uh, yeah, this is like a little lemon or lime slice, a strawberry and a melon. And I think these are really cute and very versatile. I know I have got, like cocktail stamps so I might use them for something like that so it will definitely be a summary card I'll have a think of what I make with these and I see you probably with a finished card rather than a step in between unless there's something special I need you I need to show you so I'll see you later okay so I just realized that the dies I have are way too small for these fruity dies so the glasses are about this size so that's no good but then I had the very quick idea to create a shaped card and to create my own cocktail glass and what I did for that I um, created this top folding card I still had half of this A4 sheet in my cupboard so I just could turn that in a um, top folding card and I took a piece of scrap paper, you see I didn't even bother cutting it, I just tore it apart, which is the same shape, sorry, same size as this um, card base. And all I did was I drew half of the glass on this and then I folded it this I folded this in the middle. So when I cut it out now, I have got an ideal template. By the way, I left it here. I went down a bit further. You can do a triangular one as well, like a martini glass. But I went a bit of like in a curve. And I have a, on a bit of a base. You don't want the middle bit too thin. There won't be a lot of space to write on the card. Unless I might decide only to cut the front. But I think that will take away from the actual idea. I'll have to think about this. So when you fold this out, you've got your perfectly symmetrical shape so I'd, all I need to do is now lay this on here and trace it I do it very lightly so I can easily erase it and then I will probably cut it with my scissors as I said I might just do the front panel and then adhere some backing paper in the back so you still have the look of the glass the problem is if I did the whole thing as a if I cut both um, layers it might be a bit too heavy or it might be okay I'll have a think about how I do it so you've got both options just cutting the front panel and putting some backing paper in on the on the inside or cut both panels and have it really as a shaped card I'll think about this and then I come back A little tip for when you cut pieces like that. First of all, this is a very thick cardstock. It's a 300 GSM because I wanted it to be solid for the card base. I like to use my rounded nail scissors for when I go round curves. But once you go up here, and ideally you use actually straight scissors for that bit, it gets a bit difficult if you've got too much cardstock here. So I just cut across there and then that allows me again to go into here and then I would turn my scissors round to actually fit to that curve and again I find it difficult to get in there so I just cut that bit off and then I've got enough space again for my scissors and my hands to go in and I can very easily cut around the curve here. There we go. So I'll do the other side accordingly and then I'll come back. So I have erased all the pencil marks now, but I'm left 
with these bits where I curved the cardboard because I went round with the scissors. All you need to do to get this straight is just use your um, bone folder and just flatten it out a bit. And that just makes it neat. Same here. And that's it. I rounded this off a bit here. But sorry, I just zoom out a bit again. But I'm going to leave it here at this level. Normally, if I drew a glass, it would go back in here. But I don't want to use too much of the base because the card will stand up like this. So if I cut round here, I've, it will only stand in the middle and then it might wobble a bit. So I'll use my bone fold again in the end to straighten this out. And then it can actually sit up like this. If it opens too much, I can put a little stopper in the top, but I'll see at the end what it's like once I um, put all the embellishments on. So now we'll die cut the fruit and I will probably colour this in or use some patterned paper um, and I will definitely go for the patterned paper look on the back because I think that would give a nice splash of colour. Another little tip, I have heat embossed over my stamped sentiment. I just used the Versaclair in pink and I've put some clear embossing powder on this but the embossing actually warped my card panel if I had planned this before, I would just have done it on the paper before I stuck it down and then put it there. But one, one way to remedy it is to put this through the um, die cutting machine. What I will do though, I will put a piece of paper around it to protect it so I don't have any imprints of my um, die cutting plates on this because my die cutting plates look really, really bad. I try to keep, I've labelled my top one. I try to keep that separate so it's not too bad and you can see the difference between this one and that one but they're both not perfect so I really really try to keep them from um, making any marks on my cardstock so I'm just putting this through there put it back I'm not putting it all the way through and hopefully my tip worked there you go it's not perfect but it's definitely much better. You can warm it up again, but as I said, I think the main problem here is because I've got glue on it. I put the collar glue on the back and I think the collar glue now keeps it in place because it probably warmed up again with the heat embossing, but it's good enough to go. And once it's been sent in the post, I think it will, nobody will notice. So I show you, I tell you what, I can actually show you that now if I put these out of the way show you what I've done with my die cut pieces so far. Keep that in one little bit. I have cut these, the lemons, from a bright yellow cardstock. By the way, all my cardstock I'm using for this card comes from a paper craft society box. I'll find out which one it is, but it has got all the coordinating cardstock. So whichever colour I choose from the set will actually match and that's why I went for these. So I don't have to look in my stash which colours match. And I went for the pastel colours um, just because the background there goes nicely with that. And then I thought I'd keep the pastel colours for the fruit as well. So with these I just die cut the lemons from the lighter cardstock. And then I was looking for a die from my own stash to put behind it. I've only got the slightly bigger one and it's got a stitched element there, stitched um, border, but I don't care about this. I think this is actually quite nice. If you're this sort of, sort of crafter and you love inlay, obviously you can put all the pieces back in there, but I just prefer to just have it in the back and have it like this. For the melon, I did cut it in two colours. So I cut the pink and the green and I used the strip from the green and put it in here. And I put this on black cardstock. This is really, really thin cardstock to basically have the seeds. Again, I would not be mad enough to want to inlay all of these. And I did the straight, same with the strawberries, but the strawberries, I did not want to have to fussy cut the top bit. Can you see? So I just glued on the bottom bit. So I only need to cut round the strawberries there. And the top I will just um, colour in with a green pen. I'll find, I'll see if I can find a light one. Might even use this sparkly pen. This one, by the way, the glass was a bit of a 
disaster to start with, I used this um, Sea Spray Spectrum Ra Sparkle Pen. And I thought this would just give a bit of light shading and I just wanted to have a bit on the side. But it was way too wet, the pen, as you can see here. And although I did a bit on a scrap paper first, I did not like the look of it. So I decided to just colour the whole bit in. So lots of sparkle and the recipient won't know really that it wasn't meant to be. And I will cover some of it with a fruit anyway. So that's how I've um, done what I've done so far. And I'm just going to finish this off now, decorate this. And then I'm going to show you the finished result. Okay, my card is finally finished. I tried to get this finished before the daylight goes. Sometimes I don't craft all the way through. I have a lot of interruptions in my daily life. Got other chores to do before I finish cards and allow myself to craft. But um, yeah, eventually I got this finished. So all I need to mention is I die cut the sentiment in some sort of pink um, it's just like a shimmer cardstock. It's not really, really mirror cardstock. It's a very matte mirror cardstock. So, and I thought the light pink would really go well with the other design. I thought about using a brighter pink, but I didn't want it to be too obvious because I wanted the fruit to be the center of the card. So I mentioned before how I cut these out. So I just coloured the strawberries. At first I used one of my sparkle pens. I've got a green one, but that wasn't enough. And I think it's a cardstock didn't take quite well to it. So I just used a normal alcohol marker and just um, coloured in the green bits there. The slices down here, uh, I've, after I cut them in half, I did round off the bits there because I thought that looked a bit neater. On the top here, I didn't bother too much. So yeah, um, I put these on foam um, rectangles. I used the sellotape ones. I found that the cheaper ones from the works were a bit too thick. I don't know if you can... So let me just hold these together whether you can see the difference so be aware of that as well if you mix and match or want to mix and match um, foam tapes or foam squares they do have different thicknesses and sometimes the thick ones are just too much I didn't want to have too much bulk to it anyway because it might go in the post because I know a lady in Germany who would really like this because she likes gin so I'm really pleased with this. It looks very summery, very happy and makes a difference to all the Christmas and winter cards I've been making lately. And yeah, I'm pleased uh, that I bought the dies. I think they look really, really nice. And I did check the price. They are really just a pound from Printable Haven. So I'll link to them below. I hope they're still available. But as I said, I think I've seen them at the range as well. So yeah really pleased with this card and you can stand it up obviously you can't see that well in the video now but it does stand up um, without um, sliding apart and yeah really pleased with this if you like this card too you might want to give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more of my videos you might want to subscribe to my channel I'd be very happy about that and I'll see you tomorrow with the next video